Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about expansion work in reversible adiabatic process. There are many numerical problems in thermodynamics that can be solved by using some specific formulas. So in this video, we are going to derive an important formula and we are going to see how that formula can solve different numerical problems. So let's start. Let's consider a cylinder in which ideal gas is kept. This is the ideal gas, okay. The pressure of this ideal gas is P, volume V and temperature T. And it is fitted with a weightless and frictionless piston. And the wall used in this cylinder is adiabatic wall. Adiabatic wall means heat energy cannot be exchanged between the system and surrounding that is dq will be equal to zero. The heat energy changed between system and surrounding will be zero. Now if we allow this gas to expand that means suppose this piston comes over here then the gas is expanding and when the gas expands it has to do certain work done right. Let me write that little bit things. Let us consider, let us consider a cylinder in which ideal gas is present, present the pressure, the pressure of gas is P, volume V and temperature T. When the gas expands, when the gas expands, it does certain work done. It does certain work done. Right? Now we know that to do a work done, it needs energy. Then where will it get the energy from? We know that it cannot take energy from the surrounding as it is surrounded by adiabatic wall. So it needs energy, but where will it get it from? So yeah, you are thinking correct. It will get energy from itself because it has some internal energy. That internal energy will provide it the heat energy to do the expansion work. And when it provides the internal energy, then its temperature will decrease. Let me write that. The energy is provided, the energy is provided by the gas itself. As a result of that, as a result of that, the temperature decreases. The temperature of the ideal gas decreases and we can measure the temperature in the initial and final state right so we are trying to find out the value of work done in terms of the initial and final temperature because we can easily get those values now let's start the derivation we know that the relation between pressure and volume in adiabatic condition can be represented by this curve this is the curve that represents let me write that figure curve relating pressure and volume that is P V curve for adiabatic condition okay here this is P1 and let us consider this point to be A and this is P2 this is B the corresponding volume will be V1 and V2, right? Here, the x-axis represents volume change and y-axis represents pressure change. Now, let us consider a small element somewhere like this. So, change in volume is dV. So, this is the curve that is the this is the PV curve that is the relation between pressure and volume in case of adiabatic condition. 
and here we are considering a small element having volume dv right let me write this small condition the core ab represents the core ab represents the adiabatic adiabatic relation between p and d as pressure decreases the volume is increasing right so this is the condition now the work done that is the small work done for this small element will be equal to pressure times change in volume right the work done the work done for the small element for the small element i forgot to make this sorry let us consider this a b c d and here a b this is capital c capital d okay so uh, the work done for the small element a b c d or you can simply say area of a b c d can be given by d w is equal to pressure times change in volume right this is the formula this is equation number 1 now we know that there is a relation between pressure and volume for adiabatic condition also we know pv gamma can be written as sorry pv gamma will be equal to a constant this is the relation let us consider k be that constant okay this is a random constant k pv to the power gamma is equal to constant this is the uh, relation between pressure and volume in, in case of adiabatic process where this gamma is a constant whose value is 1.44 for diatomic uh, diatomic gas and for monoatomic its value is 1.667 okay let's find the value of p from here if we try to find the value of p then this v to the power gamma will go to that side and it will divide k right so it will be this much let us consider it to be equation number Two. Now let's put this value, that is the value of p, from equation two in equation one. Then what do we get from equation one and two? From equation one and two, we get d w is equal to k into d v by v to the power gamma, and we can write it as k into v to the power minus gamma into dv let us consider it to be equation number 3 so this is the value of small change in work done for this region okay for this small element now to calculate the total work done we have to integrate this equation so for that let me read this portion let me integrate this equation to find out the total work done so integrating equation 3 in the limit v1 to v2 because we need to find out the work done from here to here right so let's integrate it if we integrate this value this will be w reversible because we are talking about reversible process and in the right side it will be k into v to the power minus gamma into dv from v1 to v2 now we know that the integration of this value is k into v to the power minus gamma plus 1 by minus gamma plus 1 right uh, from v1 to v2 because we know that the integration of x to the power and dx will give us this value the power should be increased by 1 and it is divided by the new power so we are applying that rule over here now we can write k into sorry k by this 1 minus gamma can be taken out 1 minus gamma and it will be v2 minus gamma plus 1 minus v1 minus gamma plus 1 right and if we uh, just change the position of it then it will be k by gamma minus 1 there will be a minus sign this can rotate this value as well so it will be v1 1 minus gamma Minus v two one minus gamma. So we get this value. Let's keep solving this value to get the required answer. That is k by gamma minus one. This value can be written as one by v one one minus gamma. Sorry, 
gamma minus 1 minus 1 by v2 gamma minus 1. So we get this value if we take this value to down, right? So here this is the value that we get. Let us consider it to be the equation number 4. Let me read this portion. As we know that the value of k is p v gamma that means it can be written as k is equal to p1 v1 gamma is equal to p2 v2 gamma right this is the value that we get uh, in adiabatic adiabatic process in which the relation of p and v is this much right so in place of k we can write either this value or this value so why not writing both then equation 4 becomes equation 4 becomes it will be w is equal to from here what we can write 1 by gamma minus 1 let's take this k2 here and here then let's put its value here v1 is there so it will be p1 v1 gamma by v1 gamma minus 1 minus p2 v2 gamma sorry p2 v2 yeah gamma by v2 gamma minus 1 and if we take this value these values to up that is if we use the quotient rule of indices then what will we get this value will go up gamma minus gamma plus 1 that means gamma gamma will cancel each other and there will be v2 v1 to the power 1 or simply it is p1 v1 minus p2 v2 right so we got this much now according to according to ideal gas equation ideal gas equation what can we write p v is equal to n r t this is the ideal gas equation here if we put p1 v1 then it will be n r t1 because n and r are constant terms and p2 v2 will be equal to how much n r t2 right so in place of p1 v1 we can write this value in place of p2 v2 we can write this value let's do that then w can be written as 1 by gamma minus 1 n r t1 minus n r t2 let's take this and r to be common so it will finally be w is equal to n r by gamma minus 1 t1 minus t2 so this is the required equation in expansion work in reversible adiabatic process let me write that this is the required expression but sometime in numerical problem t1 t2 will be given and cv will be given then what should we do is there any other derived formula from this yeah there is one more formula that is frequently used in numerical problems let's derive that formula with the help of this formula for that let me read this portion and let me write this portion again that is a very simple part uh, our formula for work done is n r by gamma minus 1 into t1 by sorry t1 minus t2 right and we know that the meaning of r is cp minus cv by in place of gamma we can write cp by cv minus 1 into t1 minus t2 and cp minus cv and if we take common from here then it will be sorry lcm then it will be cp minus cv by cv into t1 minus t2 here these two values will get cancelled out and this value will come up so it will be n cv t1 minus t2 so this is another formula that is frequently used to solve many numerical problems in thermodynamics. So these are the two formulas that you will use in thermodynamics to solve many numerical problems. And these are very important for examination as well. So you have to learn the uh, derivation as well as you need to know the formula to solve numerical problem. Now let's see a numerical problem which will give us the concept what kind of numerical problem is asked and we will see how it is done first of all let's see what the question says the question says find the adiabatic reversible work done for the expansion of 50 liters of an ideal gas at 5 atmospheric pressure that is 5 atm and 300 kelvin to a pressure of 1 atmospheric pressure 
and the value of r that is universal gas constant and gamma are provided so here we need to find out the value of adiabatic reversible work done and right now we learn the formula of adiabatic reversible expansion that is uh, work done is equal to n r by gamma minus 1 t1 minus t2 right so to find the values uh, to find the value of w reversible we need the value of this n and we need the value of this t2 so let first of all let's write what are given so given the value of p1 is given to be 5 atmosphere pace 5 atm that is 5 atmospheric pressure right p2 is given to be 1 atm because if the gas expands its pressure will obviously decrease so here this is p1 and this is the p2 and the volume in initial condition is given that is 50 liters and temperature that is t1 is also provided to be 300 kelvin and we need the value of n and t2 right so these are the values we need in order to find the value of w reversible process so first of all let's find the value of n that can be obtained by using the ideal gas equation so from from ideal gas equation from ideal gas equation we know the formula p v is equal to n r t and here p1 v1 is equal to n r t1 can be written right so let's put the values now in place of p1 what can be right yeah you are correct sorry i did i forgot to write over here this is 5 so 5 into in place of v1 we can write 50 is equal to n into in place of r we can write 0 0.0821 0 0.0821 into in place of t1 we can write 300 and if we solve it and find the value of n it will be 10.15 moles for that you just have to multiply these two values and take the multiple of these two values to this side and divide this value you will get this much so this is the value of n we got the value of n now our motive should be to find the value of t2 now to find the value of t2 we need to use another formula that is in adiabatic process that is the relation between p and t because p1 p2 are given t1 is also given so we can find the value of t2 so again again we can write p1 1 minus gamma into t1 gamma is equal to p2 1 minus gamma into t2 gamma this is the formula or this is the relation between pressure and temperature in case of adiabatic process so let's find the value of t2 so to do that first of all let's find the value of t2 in the equation form okay so this value will go that side this value will come this side so it will be t2 by t1 gamma is equal to p1 by p2 1 minus gamma because we can write the same power if the powers are same right so this gamma will go that side it will in it will divide this power and t1 will go another side that means t2 will be written as t1 into p1 by p2 into sorry to the power 1 minus gamma by gamma now let's put the values in place of t1 we need to put 300 into in place of p1 we need to put 5 by in place of p2 we need to put 1 1 minus 1.44 divide by 1.44 and if you put it put these values on calculator then you will directly get 183.0 kelvin so this is the value of t2 now finally we can find the value of w reversible process now let's find that value now w reversible process will be equal to how much let me write it with black marker so now we can write w reversible process will be equal to n r gamma minus 1 t1 minus t2 right let's put the values over here in place of n we can write 10.15 that we calculated 10.15 into in place of r we can write 0.0821 divided by in place of gamma 1.44 minus 1 in place of t1 we can write 300 kelvin in place of t2 we can write 
183 kelvin so if you put this on calculator you will directly get the value 22.43 joule so this is the required value of work done in reversible process for this particular numerical problem you will get questions like this sometime in numerical problem in place of this r or gamma or anything it will simply provide you the value of cv it will provide you the value of cv and t1 t2 and n so you can find uh, you can directly use the value formula w reversible process will be equal to n cv t1 minus t2 so you have to learn both the formulas in order to solve these type of numerical problems i hope you understood the derivation and the numerical problem as well that's all in this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video